Hello everybody and welcome to another hobby cheating video and today it's time to talk about swamp bogglers or as they're more commonly known cruel boys but I do love swamp bogglers as a name. So we've got this guy here from the new Dominion box set which GW was nice enough to send me one of completely unexpectedly so I figured hey might as well do a tutorial for this guy. And we're gonna start, obviously I just primed in black, but now we're putting some of that red primer over him, the Rotten Brawn primer. We're starting with a red because red is a great undertone for green skin because it's a complementary color. We're then proceeding back to a more standard Zenithal. This is actually using Steinorez Ivory Primer. And basically I'm just shooting this from above, making sure to create all the nice volumes really just giving myself a leg up for the painting, but the shadows are gonna stay in that red color. And that's gonna be really important later when we add the green of the skin because green plus red becomes a more neutral brown and that will make for very natural shadows. So I'm gonna try to keep my palette in view here for most of the, the work so you can actually see what's going on. But I'm beginning with Vallejo Olive Green and we're just applying a relatively thin base coat over the whole area. Nothing too exciting, everything skin. Now, I'm not getting it in the deepest, deepest areas. You notice how my brush is moving kind of quickly and I'm avoiding the deepest areas. I want those to stay somewhat red. Once that's done, I'm then gonna take some whole red from AK Interactive, but any brand will work, mix it with my olive green and create more of a desaturated green color. This is going to be my shadow color. So it's going to have these very naturalistic tones. The other advantage to this is because that red is worked in there, it's going to feel like blood, like life. Now, I don't wanna get into an argument of do orcs have red blood? I don't really care. The point is, is that when you mix red into something, the human perception of that thing is that it's alive subtracting red from things makes it feel dead. So by adding the red in, it makes this green skin feel like it's more alive, whether or not the blood is actually there. Now this time we've just mixed a darker version of it, slightly deeper, uh, more whole red into it. Uh, and this is going only in the deepest shadows. So up against other surfaces, up under his head, in those deep scars he has on his face, basically wherever the shadow would naturally fall. Now we begin the highlighting process. And this is olive green plus the war color spear staff brown, which is really just a yellow ochre. Any yellow ochre will work. I just happen to quite like this one. And I'm using yellow because it's going to produce that more natural swampy feeling. When I think of orcs that live in a swamp, they should have this natural tone to them. And when we use yellows as our highlight color, it just has a much more natural feel to it. Uh, and so it's not going to feel crisp or clean. It's gonna instead feel swampy and kind of dirty. Now, as I highlight here, we're gonna focus in a lot on the face and we're gonna focus on those top areas. From this point on, what I'm doing is I'm integrating my highlight as 50-50 spear staff brown, the yellow ochre, and ice yellow, which is basically just the cloudy sky from Chimera. That's just really an ice yellow color, plus the olive green. So I'm taking equal parts of the yellow and the ice yellow and mixing them into the green, but increasing the amount every time. So I'm never getting that pure ice yellow, but that ice yellow is always being warmed up some by the yellow tone. And a lot of this highlight action, I'm focusing very much in my paint time on the face and on the upper areas, because that's where most of the light's gonna fall. But also the face is where we wanna have the most detail. These guys have a lot of really wonderful expressions in their face. The scars, their nose, their uh, the little ridges as they furrow their brow. We wanna make sure we bring all of those out. I'm using relatively thin paint here. It's a thin layer consistency. It's certainly not a glaze. I'm still wicking my brush every time. But just again, you can see I'm trying to create that light 
that brightness on the face. Now this is meant to be a tabletop job, but overall this is pretty fast work. This guy did not take me a long time to do, and you could easily replicate this across a whole army. But I'm using a traditional layering method, just bringing the light up and up and up. And in fact, when I highlight with these highest highlight colors, I wasn't actually working past the lower top of the body. So those final highlights were only on the face, the upper arms, etc. Now I've mixed the whole red into a very thin glaze. And I'm just going to go around and I'm going to retouch all of these deep scars and shadow areas, but softly with this glaze. Work it into places like the lips, the lower cheeks. Now I take some of that whole red, I'm gonna mix in some of that ice yellow, which will give me a wonderful pink color. And we're gonna use that to create a little bit of pinky pink highlights on the orc's face, which really just has a great way of selling, again, that this is a living creature. So the lips, the nose, maybe a little bit in the ears, wherever there would be blood, quote unquote, uh, near the surface, maybe right under the cheek, the elbows, the knuckles, the knees, basically those kinds of areas. When you integrate just that little bit of pink tone into that green yellow, it really makes the rest of the green yellow pop because we're playing here in complementary colors, reds and greens. You can see how much more that face stands out once just that little bit of pink is added. Now for my final steps here, I'm just gonna show you through the whole process of me cleaning it up. I'm just taking the previous layer, so this is some of the not quite highest highlight, and I'm working my way around the miniature, smoothing everything out. Making sure that all of my highlights are popped up where they should be, like the chin. Maybe taking a mid-step and smoothing a blend that didn't come out quite great. That sort of thing. But you can see how much brighter the face is than anything else, especially the lower part of the body, which I want to be more in shadow, especially as they're probably standing around in swamps or knee-high grass all day. Now I'm just gonna slowly take those mid-tones and smooth it out. One of the advantages of working with yellow as your highlight is yellow is quite naturally transparent in miniature paints, which means that yes, it doesn't cover as much, but when we're talking about blending, it gets a lot easier. My last step is to take some pure olive green and work it into a glaze. And you can see just how thin that is, basically a filter there. And now what I'm going to do is just do a nice little quick glaze, not over the highlights, but starting in about the mid-tone area up into the shadows. You notice that my brush is pushing into the shadows, okay? And I'm just doing this to get a nice filter of color on there. Some of that is a little too red, so a green filter over top brings it back into clarity. So there we go. There's our finished Swamp Boggler. Uh, I painted the rest of him, obviously. This is just for the skin. The rest is pretty standard techniques. If you want to know about the leather, you can see that up in the top right, as I just did a leather video recently. So that's where you can find information on that. So I hope this lets you get your cruel boys on the table. If you liked this, give it a like, subscribe for more hobby cheating in the future. If you've got questions, drop them down below. Always happy to help, but I do hope you enjoyed this one. And as always, we'll see you next time.